Honestly, Matt, it was a fascinating couple of days. Essentially, what we got the chance to do is to head out uh, to somewhere in the North Arabian Sea to catch up with the crew of the USS Abraham Lincoln. They're one of two U.S. aircraft carriers in situ in the, re in the region. Uh, this is something that the president, of course, did back in May uh, when they decided to really uh, turn the screws on Tehran when it comes uh, to tamping down on those oil waivers and really trying to get to the source of the funding of that government. The American president decided, you know, we're going to beef up security in the region. And it was after all of that uh, that we saw those attacks on six tankers over the last several weeks. Now, interestingly enough, when I caught up with not just the crew, but also the officers of the USS Abraham Lincoln, listen to what they had to tell me. What we have seen is we've seen there's an understanding from Iran. Our, our goal is not to go to war with Iran. We've, we're really seeking to add to that stability. And from our presence, that then deters. Uh, and keeps what the, the real important piece is keeping that freedom of navigation, the importance of the Straits of Hormuz, the freedom of economic trade, you know, the 18 million barrels of oil that flow through uh, the Straits of Hormuz is absolutely critical. It's important. You know, it, it's not just an American issue, but it's a global issue. I can't tell you how many times, Matt, we heard the word deterrence by presence over the last 48 hours. We heard it not just uh, at the base when we visited the Fifth Fleet there here in Manama, Bahrain, but we also heard that as you as you can see on the USS Abraham Lincoln, it's all about deterrence, they said again and again. You know, we're not here to go to a war with Iran. And seemingly, uh, the Iranians really know that. I mean, when we asked them how often they're interacting with Iranian vessels, they said that that happens on a pretty regular basis. They exchange uh, communications. Uh, and, and the really interesting part, I think about that is just how often uh, that they actually go through the Strait of Hormuz and transit these waters and essentially are in contact and yet nothing negative seems to happen from those interactions. And I asked again and again, you know, have you seen an uptick in those kinds of conversations uh, since the start of all of these tensions? And they said, well, actually, you know, we've seen a pretty consistent level of interaction uh, over the last several months, Matt. I want to follow up on another point. A lot of the oil that comes out of the Strait, or, or Strait of Hormuz finds its way uh, to us here in Asia. What's the likelihood, uh, do you think, that Beijing will increase its presence there, if any? It's an excellent question, Matt, and, and not just uh, the folks in Asia who are receiving all of this oil that's coming out of this region, but also the folks who are exporting it, Saudi Arabia, the UAE, Qatar, etc. A lot of questions about you know, where that's going and whether or not they should actually be ponying up uh, to protect uh, those supplies. Listen in uh, to what the folks told me on the USS Abraham Lincoln. It wouldn't surprise me. Uh, China has a presence here. They have for a long time. Uh, the South Koreans have a presence here, they have for a long time. The Japanese have a presence here, they have for a long time. You know, that stemmed from the counter piracy uh, off of Somalia. Uh, and so uh, I think that any nation that was, is willing to participate would be welcome. Again, this is not a U.S. coalition. This is a construct that allows partner nations, interested nations, nations that are trying to prevent Iran from blocking the strait to come and participate. So just to sort of set the scene for you once again, guys, I mean, the USS Abraham Lincoln, one of two aircraft carriers in the Persian Gulf region, the question, of course, uh, that we were asking again and again is how often they interact uh, with their Iranian counterparts, essentially said that they were, you know, speaking to them on a pretty regular basis. When they see each other, they check in via radio signal, and that's a pretty regular occurrence. They haven't seen a major uptick in that kind of um, communication uh, since the start of these tensions in the early summer. One of the questions I also ask, of course, you heard there, you know, at some point, you know, are these other countries going to join this 20 member, member international coalition that the Americans are trying to put together called Operation Sentinel? This is all about, of course, uh, protecting commercial shipping lanes. But it's interesting, Matt, because there's already a pretty loose coalition of some 33 nations pretty much doing the exact same thing. So in terms of getting clarity on what this would actually do uh, differently from that coalition, uh, you know, I didn't really ever get a pretty straight answer on the differences. But at the end of the day, again and again, what I heard, the message from the U.S. Navy and, and really from the U.S. government generally is that this is all about deterring uh, Tehran. Hey, everybody, it's Hadley Gamble from our new CNBC Middle East Bureau in Abu Dhabi. Thanks for stopping by. Now, to watch more, you can try one of the videos that just popped up on your screen. And don't forget to subscribe.